This is a machined pulley taken off of a piece of industrial equipment, a piece of our industrial equipment. The problem is, is that this pulley is really expensive and there's really no reason for it to be. So in this video, we're gonna talk about why this pulley costs what it does and why this pulley is so much cheaper. So first of all, let's look at this pulley. This is a machined pulley. It has started out as a block of steel and then was carved down and sculpted until it made this pulley. It's very durable, it's very reliable, and it's very expensive. This pulley or ones like it cost anywhere from 100 to two to 300 dollars because turning a block of steel into a refined geometry is difficult. And when you are making it for industrial machinery, it's not necessarily very high volume. If this was a car part, it might cost like 20 to 50 bucks. But since it's for something fairly specific and fairly uncommon, even though it's a timing belt pulley, which is not that weird, it's still very expensive because there aren't millions of these. There are maybe tens of thousands of these made per year, but it has to be made this way. You wouldn't make this out of plastic because since it's so thick and chunky, plastic through traditional processes like injection molding would cause shrinkage, which would deform the teeth and deform the outer area and most certainly deform the inner bore. So in order to have a part that is structurally reliable, you have to make it from machined metal. You could potentially cast it where you would throw it into like a sand mold and get it out, but then you would still have to do a final pass with machining. So you kind of lose the cost advantage of that process because it's a reasonably precision part. The problem is, is that metal is way too strong for what this does. It is a timing pulley. It's not under high tension. In our application, it actually runs a puller on our filament extruder that is making filament for you guys and for within our giant print farms to reduce our material costs. This pulley is not under stress. Uh, from a structural and kind of strength engineering standpoint, it's fantastically over-engineered. So what did we do? Well, we went ahead and like good little engineers, we 3D printed it. Now that's all fine and dandy and everybody knows that you can 3D print a copy and 3D print a part, but that's not the end of the story and the value of that is kind of lost on folks. First of all, many people say, oh yes, we can 3D print that ourselves, we got a printer in the office, but the cost of that print is not the cost of the material. That has nothing to do with it. The material cost for this, yes, is trivial. In fact, when it's made out of steel, the material cost for this is trivial. It is all the time that goes into it. Having an engineer redesign this pulley costs $150 to $200 per hour of their time modeling this. Having that engineer then run a printer takes a bunch of time. Convincing everybody that that plastic pulley is okay takes a lot of time. So the cost is not zero. But let's look at this in a production context and let's compare to this gear. The reason we had to recreate this pulley is because we needed one that was bigger and we ended up creating a couple of different sizes and that is where the value of this really came in. This pulley, to get a different size of it was very expensive and to return it and move it around was all really tough and it's also very heavy, it's tough for the machine to move around. Making it out of plastic gives us a pulley that is lighter weight, therefore easier for the machine to start. It has less inertia on it. It also allowed us to iterate through sizes. We were able to try about three different sizes of these pulleys in the printed format to be used. But what people don't realize is that even though this pulley was made out of plastic, it is also actually functionally as strong as the steel. This is not running the gearbox for a drag race car. This is turning some wheels on a conveyor belt. Plastic is fine. Most certainly this is impossible to mold. This would also have been machined historically where you would have had a block of something like Delrin, which is a plastic, and then carve it down to a pulley shape. We did not have to do that. You simply had to upload the design and then this came out. And since it was made within a print farm, we could make hundreds if not thousands of these and make them for a fraction of the cost of these metal ones. And they perform their job just as well. Because a plastic strength, the sheer force of a plastic tooth on one of these pulleys is as high as what the belt would require because it's a rubber belt. This is just as strong as the belt itself 
having metal is redundant. It's more energy intensive to make this, it's more costly to make this, whereas making this is absolutely trivial because all you have is the cost of electricity and the cost of plastic. The other thing about this is you might have noticed that it is fully solid, even though it's still lightweight. Inside of here, you do not need solid material, so we're able to make this partially hollow. So this is not a full brick of plastic, so you're using fewer resources and fewer and less energy to process this pulley, but it's still very, very strong. Also, since it is printed, you don't have to worry about shrinkage, so we're able to get a very good tolerance all the way around, and a very thick, chunky, reliable, strong part and it was never possible to do that before 3D printing. Metal was the only way, the only viable way to make this type of part. But now printing allows us to make a better part. Now that's the engineering side of it, but for the business case, this pulley is fine, but now instead of having to machine and create each one of these pulleys and have some preset sizes, instead, once you have the engineering of the baseline design done, it's now possible to create hundreds of variations of the same pulley. We tried to source this specific pulley for our specific machine. It was very, very difficult to where it was easier to have it recreated than to just source the part. A company that was controlling these pulleys or wanting to sell these pulleys could create the CAD for a single one and then create hundreds of variations from 50 teeth, one tooth up continuously to 500 teeth, whatever it happens to be, and create every pulley that anyone could ever possibly need. And the cost to create that is basically trivial because once the engineer creates one design, creating all the other variations takes a fraction of the time. So now you have increased your product options without increasing inventory because printing is able to produce these on demand, whereas tooling up for these even to machine them is quite a job. You have a part that is more economical because it uses a low amount of material, a more common material that could even be made from recycled stuff, no longer requires expensive machining or subtractive manufacturing that wastes everything that wasn't used to make the actual pulley itself, and you still get the geometry, you still get the strength, and you still get a part that you actually need. So it was kind of interesting when we went into designing a new pulley for our machine, we just thought nothing of it until we realized how difficult it was to do this five years ago and now you're actually able to make a polymer version that is just as good, if not better, because now it's lighter weight, you have more optionality, and you have more design control, because you don't have to machine a block of steel. This uh, spool was actually made for our extruder out of our crystal clear uh, filament, and it is a uh, tough PLA, which actually works really well for gears because again, they're not under stress if they're well designed. They just have to pull along and you have to do shear. So PLA is actually one of the strongest materials for like gears. Um, but yeah, go ahead and check out our filament. It has finally released. Uh, go ahead and get yourself a spool. This will be a limited batch and then there won't be any more for a little while. We'll be moving over to black, but check out tangledfilament.com and make yourself a reel if you need it, or a pulley, whatever you need inside of your factory or print farm. Have a great day, everybody.